Okay, I have been working on a pattern that I think you guys will like. Um, what's great about this pattern is that you can like size it to any yarn that you might want to use, but this is one of the, my most favorite things that I've created and it's so easy. It's so quick to work up and you can use scrap yarn with it and it uses like minimal sewing. I can't call it officially no sew, but it uses like just the tiniest amount of sewing. Let me show you. It is this guy. Aren't they so cute? I think they're fantastic. So these are my little loaf cats and I'm gonna teach you exactly how to make these little loafy guys. Um, like I said, it's minimal sew. So the only thing that you're sewing on is the tail to the body. So it's pretty minimal. And then obviously you have to embroider the face, but like, you know, like you gotta get a face on there somehow, but um, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, beginner friendly, um, and like I said, you can size it to <laughs> whatever size that you want. So this was made with leftover scrap yarn from my haku pattern. I couldn't make another haku because I needed four skeins. I only had two skeins left. So this used a skein and a half of fluffy yarn. Obviously, if you have a bigger skein, you'll get like more out of it. This uses the exact same pattern. It's just different yarn, different um, crochet hook. So this uses like super chunky yarn and then a size 6.0 uh, millimeter hook. And then this uses size four yarn and a 3.0 millimeter hook. And listen, it's easy. Like there are some like complicated bits to it, but minimal so. And you know, you might learn a little something along the way. So I will get right into it and we'll start out with supplies first and then we'll get right into the pattern. Of course, all of my instructions are down below if you want to use that, but um, I have a little surprise at the end that I want to show you guys. So uh, stay tuned for that or just skip all the way to the end. It's up to you, but planning on coming out with another follow up video to this video. So. Just saying, if you want to skip ahead, if you want to watch the whole thing, I'd appreciate that. And make sure you give this video a like if you want to subscribe. Please do. If you don't, that's, uh, that's fine. Um, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So this is the yarn that I'm going to be using. It's a size 4 yarn, but you can use any size 4 yarn that you want. This is Stylecraft Special Erin. Um, I usually use Paintbox Simply Erin, but um, I kind of like the color of this one for our little Halloween-y cat. Um, so this one's in copper or um, 1029 is the shade color. Um, but again, you can use any color that you want, but this will be our main color. The other color that we're going to need is we're just going to need a little bit of white yarn, like literally the tiniest amount, like probably about this much. We just need it for the eye details. So that is our secondary color or just our detail color. But this is also size four yarn. This is paint box simply Erin um, and it's in paper white. And then I am also using some crochet thread. Um, so this is just kind of some small crochet thread. I think it's size 10. I actually don't remember, but it's quite small. And this is just for the face details as well, just for sewing them in. Um, you can use any like thread that you want. You can use just sewing thread or you can use some uh, embroidery floss that will also work well. So next let's talk about our crochet hooks. So I'm going to be using a 3.0 millimeter hook um, depending on your yarn. So if you want to size up the yarn um, you will need a bigger crochet hook. If you want to size down the yarn you will need a smaller crochet hook. So usually for size 4 yarn I will always recommend a 3.0 millimeter hook. Um, if you find that your tension is a little bit too tight, you might want to go up a hook size. If you find that your tension is a little too loose, then you might want to go down a, a hook size. So just some other little things that we will need. We'll need a stitch marker. I find them very helpful. You don't need anything like this. You can use a piece of string, you can use a bobby pin, but just something so you can mark your stitches. That's super helpful. 
The next thing that you need is some safety eyes. These are six millimeter safety eyes and they have the backings here. I think these ones are from a brand called Doris. Um, I find them really good because they like are so hard to get off. Um, but any six millimeter safety eyes would be great. Um, you don't have to use the backings if you don't want to. Some of them don't come with backings and you can just easily glue them into place. So the next thing that we're gonna need is a tapestry needle. And then we are also gonna need some scissors, just whatever scissors you have. I don't think it really matters. They're not very important. And then the last thing that we're gonna need is a decent amount of stuffing. Um, just, you can take it out of previous pieces or from pillows or whatever, just something to stuff your piece. You can also use scrap yarn. Um, that's always a good good way to reduce and save some some stuffing too. So just a couple of things before we actually start. I want to preface this by saying I use the yarn under method. So this means that I instead of yarning over my hook, I yarn under my hook. I have a video where I explain it here. Um, so you can click on that if you want to learn, but you can use the yarn over method for this. It doesn't really make that much of a difference. I just find the stitches look a little bit neater and tighter. Um, and that's super, super helpful for no stuffing to show through. And it also lines up the, the stitches a little bit better. The other thing that I wanted to mention is that this uses US terms. So these are not UK terms um, and it works completely in the round. So we will not be finishing rows. We will be working within the round. So we won't be like finishing off with a slip stitch and then a chain. It will just continue to go and go and go. Okay, so to start, we're gonna take our 3.0 millimeter crochet hook and we're gonna make a magic circle. I do have a tutorial about the magic circle. If you don't know how to do one, I would recommend watching that video, but I'll quickly go over it here. So we're just going to kind of make a makeshift slip knot. So we'll wrap it around two fingers, our crochet hook into the loop, pull up that back thread, and then we're going to make a chain. So you have that loop. So again, if you don't know how to make a magic circle, uh, go check out my video on how to make a magic circle first. Or if you really want, you can use the chain two and single crochet and second chain from hook method. I prefer this method better just because it ends up a little bit cleaner, especially because it's right in the middle of the face. So after we've created our magic circle, we're going to make a magic circle of six. So we're gonna put six single crochets into this magic circle. So that's three, four, five, six. And I just like to count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. So after that, we can pull our magic circle tight and then we've got something like this. So I don't usually count my magic circle as a part of round one or row one, just cause it feels like a base for me. Um, so I would consider what I'm doing next as round one. And round one is going to be increasing into every single stitch. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna put two single crochets into every single stitch. So if we had six stitches and we're increasing into all of them, we'll have 12 stitches at the end. So I just counted this one, but from here on out, I like to use my stitch marker and I personally like to mark the last stitch of my round, but it's up to preference. If you prefer the first stitch of your round, just make sure it's the same every single time. So round two will be single crochet increase. And we're gonna do that all the way around. So we're gonna do that times six. So single crochet and then increase and then single crochet and then increase. Just keep going all the way around, repeating the same pattern. And then at the end of the round, you should have 18 stitches because we added six, if that makes sense. I mean, crochet math is a little bit tricky, but once you get the hang of it, it kind of starts to make sense. Um, so now our next round is going to be single crochet two and then increase. And we're gonna repeat that six times. 
So we're gonna have an additional six stitches, leaving us with 24 stitches at the end of the round. Okay, so I'm just finishing up my last little bit, ending off with the increase. And I'm gonna put my stitch marker back on. So I should have 24 stitches at the end of this round. The next round is going to be single crochet three and then increase. And we're gonna do that six times. So then we would be adding six stitches. Okay, so that is 30 stitches. And then, so now we're gonna move on to another round of increasing. This is gonna be single crochet four and increase. So hopefully you can kind of see the pattern that I'm doing. So the first round was increase all the way around. Second round was single crochet increase all the way around. The next round was single crochet two increase all the way around. The next row was single crochet three increase all the way around. And now we're gonna do single crochet four increase all the way around. And so we should end up with 36 stitches. Okay, so now I've got my 36 stitches here. If you wanna count before we move on, just to make sure that you have the right amount of stitches, that's probably a good idea. All right, so now we are kind of moving on to the next section here. We are gonna start by single crocheting two stitches, just two, just for now. And for this next part, we are going to, in the front loop only, so if you know front loop versus back loop, you can see that I have both loops right here on my hook. And if I just go in through the front loop, it's just going in through the front part of that braid or the front part of that V. So you need to make sure that you're able to define what your back loop is versus your front loop. So in the front loop only, we're going to put a single crochet. So it should look like that. Kind of looks like it's pulling a little bit, but on the back, you can see that other bar or the back loop that we didn't use. I mean, maybe you can't see it. It's kind of hard to tell, but once you recognize stitches more, um, you can kind of see that there's like this loose, lonely bar right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna chain two. So I like to yarn over my chains, even though I say yarn under, I just find them easier. I don't, I have no idea why. So we'll chain two. And then in the second chain from the hook, we're going to go into just that top part of that V and we are going to single crochet. So it should look something like this, okay? Then in the front loop of like the base of our piece, you can see where we came off with that front loop single crochet. We're gonna do the same thing in that front loop. So we're gonna go into the front loop again, the same front loop that we went into previously, and we are going to make a single crochet. So it kind of looks like that. So right now we're making the ears. So if you pull, you can see that there's like this little hole that shows up. And this is a good indicator of which stitch you went into. Um, so we're gonna continue on our piece, but we're gonna go into the next stitch over. So this is where we came off of and I'm gonna go into the next stitch over. We're gonna single crochet five stitches, continuing on. So one, two, three, four, five. And remember, we're going back into both loops now. We're not doing front loop only anymore. So now that we have our five stitches, we're gonna be working on the other ear now. So in the front loop only of the next stitch over, we're gonna put a single crochet, and then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna put a chain and another chain, and then in the second chain from the hook, we are going to make a 
And then all I'm gonna do is I'm going to single crochet the rest all the way back to the stitch marker. So I'm gonna fast forward along here and I will meet you at the end again. So that is our second ear. So now after we've gotten this second ear, we're gonna crochet in both loops again, continuing on all the way back to our stitch marker. Okay, so I got to the end of my piece and we have something like this. So we've got two little, little bobbly things up here and then we have our center circle and we're kind of on this side. So for this round, we are going to start by single crocheting two, one, two, and now we are to this little bobble thing that we created in the last round, but we're not gonna go over top of the ear and like crochet up the ear and down the ear because we want this to stick out. So I'm gonna pull that ear forward and look at the back of the piece and try and find that back loop only that we didn't crochet into. So I can see it right here. Let me see if I can zoom it in for you. I can see it right here. There's just like this horizontal lonely bar that sits right here. If you pull the stitch up a little bit, you can see that there's a hole and then there's like this horizontal bar before going into the rest of the piece. So I'm gonna kind of just tilt this down kind of towards me so I can see that horizontal bar. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that horizontal bar and I'm going to single crochet. So that will leave this ear out of the mix. Now we're gonna find, we're gonna like skip over this ear part and I'm gonna find the stitch that is next over. So we have two stitches in this stitch right here and this is our ear section. And then I'm gonna go into the stitch over from that, which is right here. So you can see that V right there, and I'm gonna single crochet into that one. So now you can see our little ear is just sitting right there and it's closed up. There's no longer a hole in this spot. So I'm gonna single crochet four more times. So one, two, three, four, and now we are over to the other ear. So I didn't count that fifth one because that one was the one that I instructed you to do. So it'll be technically five stitches in between the ears, but you know, we did the one and then I did four more. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna bend the ear backward, look for that horizontal bar. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a horizontal bar right here. And then we are going to single crochet into that horizontal bar, skip the ear, and go into the next stitch over. And there we go, there's our second ear. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm going to single crochet the rest all the way back to the stitch marker. Um, so this is what we've got going on and you can see that it's starting to kind of curl towards the back, but remember if you are on this side, just invert it to this side. Um, it'll save you a lot of trouble later. And so now, what we're gonna do is we are going to single crochet 20. And I'm gonna put like a little asterisk or something here because sometimes it might not be 20 for you. It really ha it really depends on your tension um, where, you know, where is a good place to stop because we are gonna be putting on the legs now and we want the legs directly under the ears. So my tension might be tighter than yours, my tension might be looser than yours. So about 20 stitches is, uh, is what I'm gonna say because you know, it really, it really depends. So I'm going to single crochet about 20 stitches. So I actually have 22 stitches here. Um, and kind of, so this next part is going to be a bobble stitch and then you'll single crochet three stitches and then do another bobble stitch. So if you think about that, that's technically taking up five stitches. So what I like to do is measure it out with my thumbs and see if it lines up. So I've got five stitches between my thumbs and that doesn't look like it lines up. So I'm gonna take out a stitch. 
So now I've got 21. So I'm going to visualize five stitches and that looks pretty good. Um, it's not going to be exact. It's totally fine. When we stuff it, it'll be better. But just kind of you want it to land underneath your two ears. You kind of want it to, you know, sit right underneath. So once you figured out what number works best for you, mine is 21 for this one, we are going to do a bobble stitch and we're going to do, I don't know what it's actually called, but I'm going to say a three stitch bobble stitch. Um, and the way that we start our bobble stitch is yarning over or yarning under for me, but yarn over or under your hook and then go into the next stitch over, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, go through both. So I'm going to say yarn over even if I'm going yarn under. The concept is the same. So now we have two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull it up, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have three loops on our hook. And then we're going to go yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now we have four loops on our hook and then we are going to yarn over and pull through all of the stitches on our hook. So now we've got this little bobble that's forming. And then in the next stitch over, we are going to single crochet. So that's in the next stitch over and you can see now we have our bobble secured. So I'm going to do two more single crochets, one and two. And then I am going to do another bobble stitch. So yarn over into the next stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. One more time. Yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then we are going to yarn over and pull through all. Okay? And then we are going to just finish off our round. So we're going to go into the next stitch over and single crochet, and then we're going to single crochet the rest of the way. So we're not too far away here. Okay, and then you can kind of look and see if you put your stitches in the right spot. Um, I have definitely had to go back and move mine just because my tension was tighter that day. But you can see now we've got our little nubbin feet that are right there. And we have finished this round. So we are going to stop for a second and we are going to start working on the face because now we have some sort of idea of where the face is going to land. So I'm going to put my stitch marker in. Pull out that loop nice and long just so it doesn't fall out and then we are going to get our safety eyes and the white yarn and our scissors and our tapestry needle and our crochet thread or the black tapestry tapestry embroidery embroidery thread um, and we're going to start working on the face Okay, so I have just cut a couple pieces of yarn, some of the black thread and some of the white scrap yarn. I have my tapestry needle and I've got my safety eyes. So we're gonna work with the safety eyes first. Um, this is all about preference as well. It depends on where you prefer to place them, but you know that these two are your ears and the bobbles that we just finished are your feet. So I kind of like to go in around here and around here so you can see they're kind of even in between this little little magic circle start um, and they're even between the ears and the feet i like to have them like quite low <laughs> i don't know that's just my preference but you can put them wider if you want you can put them closer wherever wherever you feel like you like them so i like here so once that is good i am going to take the backings and I am going to put them onto the backs. So now I'm going to take my white thread and my tapestry needle and I'm gonna thread it on and we are gonna start doing the details around the eyes. 
So sometimes these two tails will get in the way. So just always make sure you're checking that you are not sewing these tails into the piece. Just make sure that you have them off to the side. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go kind of under the safety eye, this little backing. Um, I like to look on this side and feel on the bottom where that backing is because we're gonna go underneath. And we are gonna start in the bottom. We're gonna come out the bottom of the, the piece, right where the eye is. Come out right below the bottom and pull it up so that there's only a little bit of a, a white tail here. And then you're gonna kind of follow this all the way around the outside of the eye and go in to the other side. So I like to think of it as coming out at six o'clock and going back in at 12 o'clock. So this can sometimes be finicky because you don't want to pull them too tight, but you also want them to not be flopping around anywhere. So you just want to gently tug and pull until it feels right. So remember that <laughs> when we put the one on and we start doing the other one, you don't want to be pulling this too much because it'll pull this tighter and it'll pop underneath your safety eye and then it's just a pain to get back out again so try not to pull from here on out once you find what what you like and what you're happy with do not pull <laughs> okay so now we're going to do the same thing with the other side so we're going to go out at six o'clock ish if we can get there take your time out at six o'clock don't pull too tight. Make sure that your, your tails are loose over here. And don't pull too tight, okay? You wanna leave a little bit of slack and then you go around the eye and go back in at 12 o'clock. And you wanna keep them as close to six and 12 as you can because they look really wonky if, uh, if they're not the same. So you can see that that looks pretty wonky because I came out a little bit too far over, but that's okay, I don't mind. Um, it just looks a little, a little silly, but you can adjust these and fix these by pulling certain areas, or if you want to undo this part, you totally can. Sometimes this part is a little bit finicky because you know, it's it's like one piece of thread that's that's being pulled. So sometimes I'll just pull the yarn in different places to see if it'll even out before I completely unsew. Okay, so that is quite a bit better. So I just moved that piece a little bit further along and this piece a little bit further towards the right. And it looks a whole lot more even to me. It's not perfect, but you know, Hey, it's a cutie pie anyways. So we have finished the eyes. I'm gonna take the piece and go to the back of it, kind of inverting it along the way, and then take our white yarn tails and just gently tie them together. Do not tug. Do not tug the yarn too much or else it will pull your uh, eye details into a different placement. So I just want to secure them together and that's it, like do not, do not mess around with a good thing, okay? And then you can take your scissors and you can just kind of cut your tails just a little bit. You can use these for stuffing, but I just wanna get them out of the way so I don't catch them in anything. Now you're gonna take your tapestry needle again and your black thread, embroidery floss, whatever, and you are gonna put your needle through the inside of the piece to the outside of the piece directly into the magic circle and you're going to pull through until there's a little bit of yarn left on the other side and i like to turn my little cat upside down and we're going to be making the mouth now so what we do is we go into the piece just kind of a stitch down and then i'm going to go back up through the magic circle start pull it a little bit not too much don't want to cinch it closed and then just towards one side the other side so we kind of went in this diagonal now we're going to go in that diagonal so i'm going to go one stitch towards the left and pull that like that so now we have a little v i mean for me it's a v but now it is an upside down V. 
Um, and now we are going to go kind of just beside, so this is the magic circle hole. We are going to go like just beside it, but in line with the top or the point of the V. And I'm gonna pull just beside it and then go onto the other side. So you're gonna be making a line. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. Maybe when you see it, it'll be a little more clear. So it's like a little line that's on top. So then you'll end up with a little something like this. If you want the nose a little bit thicker, you can totally do that and do it again. So you'll make another, sorry, I don't wanna, <laughs> I'm like catching my yarn. So then you'll go up through the one side, the opposite side to what you just did. Um, and then you can double up on it and make it a little bit thicker if you choose. Try not to split your yarn. Sometimes I find it good to go twice, but for the second time around, you go a little bit underneath and inwards because that kind of makes the shape of a nose a little bit more. So you're not going in between a stitch. You know how stitches kind of have holes and separation spots. This is going through the stitch. So it's not, it's not in between a stitch at all. <laughs> So now we're gonna take uh, that extra yarn there and we are gonna work on the whiskers. So where we're gonna come out is just underneath the eye. There's a little space between our stitches just beneath the eye on either side. So we're gonna go out through that stitch. And then the way that I like to do it is to have one, uh, one whisker going straight horizontal and then the other one on an angle. So you're gonna go two stitch, two like rows out or rounds out. So one, two, and we're gonna go right into that hole that is most horizontal. So you'll end up with a little something like that. And then you'll go back through that hole that you started with. So I'm gonna go to one stitch hole away here. So you can see how this curves and we're gonna go one stitch hole away to make it a little more horizontal. So now you got something like this. And then we'll take this yarn, make sure you don't get it tangled with, with <laughs> your actual yarn. And we are going to go out through just underneath the other eye. So out just underneath where that hole is and then horizontal two stitches away. And then back out through that first one and then sometimes it doesn't exactly line up but you kind of want to have it in the same angles so if you have to go a stitch or so below or in between a stitch that's totally fine just try and make sure that they even out as much as possible so this is what I have right now so I'm gonna take this yarn and also tie it to the back of my piece trying not to tie it too tight so now we are going to put our tapestry needle aside and I'm gonna take my crochet hook back and put it into our stitch that's hanging there. Okay, so for the next step is we are gonna be making the length of the body. So you can make this as long as you want. If you want kind of the same proportions that I've done here, I have done 10 rounds from here to here and then we start with the legs after that. So you'll crochet 10 rounds of straight single crochet all the way around. So you will have 36 stitches in each round. So I will meet you right where we start to get into the bobble stitch because sometimes that can be confusing on what you need to crochet into. So I will meet you over there once, um, once I go all the way around. Okay, so I'm kind of nearby those bobble stitches. I'm actually one stitch away. Um, a good way to see where you're at is to kind of pull that bobble stitch away and pull your stitches apart a little bit and you can see your stitches a little bit better. 
So this is the stitch right before the bobble stitch. So I'm gonna go into that stitch with the single crochet and then I'm gonna turn my piece like this so I can see. So what we normally look for are those Vs, but you can see that this one is an elongated V. This is from our bobble stitch, which is totally fine. It's just a longer stitch, but you're just gonna go directly under both loops and you're gonna single crochet just like it's a normal stitch and then pull that bobble out of the way and see where your next stitch is. So that was our stitch for the bobble and you can see our next stitch is right here. There's a little opening for it and that is our next stitch. So I'm going to do three, one, two, three, and now we should be next to our next bobble. So you're looking for that elongated V right on the top. If you have trouble finding it, just turn your piece to face you so that you can see the tops, like the V's right there, and go underneath that elongated V right there. And then pull your bobble out of the way, and then find your next stitch, and go into both loops on the next stitch over. So just make sure that you have 36 stitches at the end of each round. But now that we've kind of gotten rid of those bobbles and it's kind of all straightened out now, it should be much easier to see where those stitches are. But it's a good idea to count every once in a while to see if you accidentally added a stitch or accidentally missed a stitch. You just want to make sure that you have 36 all the way down because if you don't, your piece might be a little bit wonky. It might get bigger or smaller. So just make sure you've got 36. 36 stitches at the end of each round. So what we're gonna do, we already did that, that first round of straight single crochet. So we have nine more rounds to go of straight single crochet. So I'm gonna go along. <laughs> this sometimes takes a little bit longer because it is nine rounds of 36 stitches, but I'm gonna go along and I will meet you guys right at the end. Feel free to pause here or if you have to leave, grab yourself a snack, that's totally fine. And uh, we'll meet back up in a sec. Okay, so I have crocheted those 10 rounds, not, well, pretty much nine since we last left off. And so now we're gonna be working on the other feet. So just like these feet where I said, you know, it might end up in a different spot for you versus me, um, the same thing applies over here. <laughs> so. I found that 20, about 24 stitches will line up pretty good for my pieces, but it really depends. So I'm gonna go around 24 stitches and then see where we're at. Okay, so I actually crocheted 25 stitches and I feel like 25 stitches might be better in this case. I'm just lining it up just like how we did before. So having the five stitches in between our thumbs so one, two, three, four, five. You can see the five stitches in between my thumbs will kind of line up pretty good with the previous. So I'm gonna go with 25 stitches and then a bobble. So we're gonna do the bobble in the same way. So yarn over into the loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now you have the four stitches on your hook and then we are going to yarn over and pull through all of the stitches on the hook. I think I split a stitch so it's being a little bit annoying there. There we go. And then you have that. So now I'm going to go into the next stitch over and we are going to single crochet and then single crochet in the next two stitches over. And then we are going to do another bobble. So yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pick up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pick up the loop, yarn over, pull through two. One more time, yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull up that loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then finally yarn over and pull through all of the stitches. And then we are going to single crochet into the next stitch over and into every stitch following until the end of the round. 
So for me, it was four stitches until the end of the round. So now we have our little feet. So these will match our top ones. So you can see that that's pretty good, pretty aligned. It's not gonna be exact just because the stitches kind of move towards the right as you work in the round, but that's okay as long as it's kind of around the same area. And we are going to work all the way around one more time so we'll have 36 stitches again we're gonna do 36 single crochets all the way around okay so we are going to decrease in the same kind of pattern that we increased in so except backwards if that makes sense so for starting we did increase and then single crochet increase and then single crochet two increase and then single crochet three increase and then single crochet four increase we are gonna do that but backwards. So we're gonna start out with single crochet four and then decrease. And the way that we do the decreases is with an invisible decrease. So we are gonna do single crochet four, three, four, and then we're gonna invisible decrease. So the way that we do that is by picking up the front loops only of the next two stitches. So like that. And then we'll yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through both. So that is our invisible decrease. It kind of just makes it a little bit more uniform and doesn't allow as much stuffing to poke through when we get to that point. So we're gonna repeat that six times. So one, two, three, four single crochets, and then invisible decrease. Okay, so I'm on my last decrease here. So we're gonna invisible decrease that last stitch and replace our marker. So now the next row is we are gonna do single crochet three and then decrease. So single crochet three and then invisible decrease. And we had 30 stitches for the previous round. And we're gonna go down six stitches because we're multiplying this pattern by six. And that will give us 24 stitches. So that was the end of our single crochet three and decrease round. So we had 24 at the end of that. Now we're gonna do single crochet two and then decrease. We're just going to go single crochet two and then invisible decrease all the way around. So six times and we will be decreasing six stitches and ending up with 18. And there we go. So now we're gonna take a little bit of a break here. I'm gonna pull that loop up a little bit and we're gonna take our stuffing now. So grab a whole ton of stuffing. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna slowly start to push this in. What I like to do is kind of flatten it around the outside of the piece and then stuff the center. I find that gives it a better shape. So I use a lot of stuffing. I wanna make sure that it holds its shape really well. So I like to use a lot of stuffing because uh, it tends to push out different areas and it, and it maintains the, the shape when I, when I squish it. So it's not gonna be perfect. We don't want it to be overflowing out of this side. So we are just gonna leave it kind of like this because we'll stuff a little bit more at the end but you can see it's already coming together really well so we are going to go back to crocheting and we are going to continue on with single crochet and then invisible decrease and we're going to do that six times all the way around and that will leave us with 12 stitches so there we go so now i should have 12 stitches and we are coming up to the last round. I'm gonna take a sec and stuff a little bit more. So kind of stuffing it outwards this way just to kind of prop up this back side. Okay, so we are on our last round. So we are going to decrease six times. So invisible decrease all the way around and we had 12 stitches and we are decreasing six times 
which means we will end up with six stitches. Okay, so that's my last decrease. And it's still a little bit unstuffed here. So what you can do is you can give your little, little cat, little loaf cat, a little squish in the center to try and push out some of that stuffing towards the end. Or you can take a little bit more stuffing if you really, uh, if you really need it. And I like to use the back of my crochet hook or sometimes scissors work really well. And I just kind of stuff it in with the back, just taking little pieces at a time. So after you're happy with the stuffing, you are gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut a, a couple of inches, not too much because all we're doing is seaming this up. And we're gonna pull that loop out and take your tapestry needle and thread that through. I have so much stuff around me. So we're gonna thread that through. And what we're gonna do is we are going to finish this off. So we have st six stitches remaining. And we're gonna take the tapestry needle and pull the front loop only of the remaining stitches and just go through the front loop of the remaining stitches. So pull that yarn through each of the front loops of the six remaining stitches. So this is my last one. And then you take this and you pull nice and tight. You can see it kind of ends up with this little, little knobby thing. And to get rid of that, you're just gonna take the tapestry needle and put it through that center and out somewhere in the body. So that's not really gonna go anywhere. I mean, unless you really try and get it out, it's really not gonna go anywhere. And you're just gonna take that yarn tail and trim the excess. So what you're gonna do now is give your piece a little squish and that little tail will disappear into your piece. So now you got something like this. <laughs> so now all we need to do is make and attach the tail and then we're all done. Now we are working on our tail. So we're gonna use that same color that we've been working with and we are gonna make another magic circle and we are gonna make a magic circle of six again. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> so remember if you don't know how to do a magic circle or if you need to slow down and make that go a little bit slower, just give the video a pause or check out my other video on magic circles. Uh, and then you can come back to this point. So the next step is to single crochet around. So we're gonna do single crochet six. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, that was a slip stitch. It actually just slipped off of my hook. So that's five and six. So now you have something like this. Those stitches are a little bit tricky to get into, but it'll get easier as you go. Sometimes you just have to pull a little bit tighter to get into the next stitch. But as long as you have six stitches, you'll be fine. So the next part is we're just gonna single crochet six for 11 more rounds. So we're just gonna get this tube that starts to form. Okay, so I am gonna meet you after 11 rounds. I will be right back. Okay, so I just finished crocheting 11 rounds and this is what I've got. I've kind of got like this little bigger knobbier end and then it kind of thins out. I find if I twist the piece a little bit, it kind of straightens out a little bit and it lines up those stitches, which is my preference. But I have the starting tail of my piece, so I wanted to show you how I got. So, so I wanted to show you how I, but I have the starting tail of my piece that is poking out like this. So I wanted to show you how I kind of get rid of that. So what I do is I take it and I kind of fold it in half and start twisting it. And when you twist it, it kind of naturally wants to like spiral up like that, which is perfect. So I just hold it with one hand and then I take some scissors or 
my crochet hook or anything that will kind of fit within the piece and I just kind of jam it in there. Um, sometimes scissors work really well obviously closed you don't want to you don't want to snip anything and you just twirl it and stick it in there so you kind of end up with something like this and i'm just gonna cut the yarn just leaving enough to sew in and then we are going to take our tapestry needle again push all of our other supplies away and put that onto the hook and we are going to find a good position for our tail. Now you don't need to stuff this because it kind of supports itself. It kind of has like a bounce back and it also allows you to shape it a little bit if you don't stuff it. If you want to stuff it, it's fine. I just, I don't think it's that necessary. So we are gonna look at the front of our piece and start kind of positioning it right in the middle upper area of the back slash butt. <laughs> and what I'm doing is I'm taking like this edge that's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like a step down actually. Like if you can see the stitch is, this stitch is much higher than these stitches over here. So actually there is a purpose for this uh, because I'm gonna use this little ridge to kind of help position the tail on the back. So. This little ridge, this little higher spot, is going to go towards the butt area. So I'm just gonna kind of place this around, position it. You can use pins if you want. I just find it's not super, super helpful. And I'm gonna go and stitch through one row or round of the piece. And then you kind of have something like this. So I'm going to position the tail again and start moving it into places where I think it should go. Cause I could position it over, I could position it over here or I can position it here or I can position it here depending on my next stitch. So the next stitch is pretty crucial. So next we're gonna go into both loops of the stitch over on the tail and pull that up. And then we are going to find where the natural next spot should be. So I'm going to kind of put that up here and think, okay, it's probably going to go somewhere in this area. So we're going to go back into the hole that one of these stitches are coming out of. We're going to go back into that hole and I'm going to go up that hole. And then we are going to pick up the next stitch and then try and find the next natural spot. So we'll go in through the hole that we came out of and then out just next door. And then we'll keep repeating that by picking up each stitch on the tail and going around. Sometimes I won't go back into the previous stitch that we came out of just because I need to move the tail over slightly. So I don't wanna go back in there. I want it to move a little bit towards the right. So I kind of went down into the piece a stitch over and then came up the stitch over from that. And then we're just gonna continue all the way around, making sure all six stitches are sewn into the piece. So, I mean, I can't consider this no sew, but it's definitely minimal sew, so I think that counts. And then at the very end, we're gonna put a knot. The way that I do my knots is by starting by going through the piece, leaving this loop, so instead of pulling it all the way, I'll put my, my needle through that loop and pull. And then just to make sure that it's nice and secure, I'll do it again in almost the exact same spot. So I'll go through, pull that loop, and then go through that loop and pull tight. And then I'm going to insert my needle just nearby so that we can hide the yarn through the piece. There we go. So I have pulled off my tapestry needle and I'm going to take my scissors and cut the excess 
And then to get rid of that little yarn piece that's sticking out, we're just gonna give it a little squish. And there we go. We have our little cat, our little loaf cat that's able to stand up, sort of. I mean, he's kind of roly poly, but he technically has legs. So there is our little guy. Look at him, he's so cute. He did such a great job. Look at him, he's so happy. Um, so yeah, I like I like this pattern because you can kind of manipulate the tail a little bit to to go either way If you want it standing straight up, you can have it straight up or you know curled slightly. I think it's super cute Okay, so hopefully you got through the pattern and hopefully you like the pattern I appreciate you guys watching and making some loafy cats with me like I said, I wanted to mention a little surprise and a little teaser for the next video, but I'm going to be doing a little add-on um, to this little loaf cat. A special Halloween add-on to the loaf cat. For those of you that are part of my Twitch stream, you probably know what I'm talking about. But for those of you who don't watch my Twitch stream, um, twitch.tv slash false bubbles, um, listen. I see you. I know what you're doing at Michael's. You're looking through the Halloween section already. I see you. And the next video is for you. So you can make your very own Halloween loaf cat with this cute little witch hat attached onto it. Isn't that so cute? I love it. It has this little notch at the top. He is so sweet. So you can make it in any color and then you can give him a little a little black witch's hat with a little detail, little piece on it. What the heck? Why is that so cute? Um, but yeah, like most of my patterns that I release, you can do whatever you want with this pattern. If you want to sell the product that you make from this pattern, please do. I would love it if you gave me credit because that would mean the world to me. Um, of course, tag me in all of your Instagram posts, Twitter posts, TikToks, whatever. I'm pretty much false bubbles everywhere now. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and please stay tuned for this little Halloween version of our little loaf cat. But thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.